Hello, everyone. Welcome to St. Teresa of Calcutta Parish as we celebrate the Eucharist on the Feast of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ. Celebrating with us tonight is Father Brandt, and assisting him is Deacon Tom. Before we begin Mass, will you please pray with me the prayer for the success of our capital campaign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty Father, as we gather to celebrate the sacrifice of your Son and share the gifts of the Holy Eucharist, we are united as one Christian family. We pray that we can be your instruments on earth to imitate the faith, hope, and charity that Mother Teresa lived. As she gave sacrificially of herself, send us your spirit to guide us in stewardship that we may joyfully give of our hearts, prayers, and resources, and grow in ministry for this and future generations of our parish. Father, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our entrance hymn today is found in the Spirit and Songbook number 208, Come to Jesus, number 208. People love from God when they just welcome to your brand new day. Leave the world in all its trappings, come into amazing grace. Let go your every fear, there is only mercy here. Come to Jesus, hope that frees us, life that breathes in us, come. Jesus and believe that He is love. Oh, come. Oh, come. All who walk alone in shadow, all who stand with faith assured. Those who follow with abandon, those who long for something more. These are the gifts we bring, our lives the offering. Come to Jesus, hope that frees us, life that breathes in us. Come. And believe that he is love. Oh, God. Oh, God. Good evening. This evening we come together to celebrate the traditional feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the Holy Body and Blood of Jesus. Today, as we celebrate this liturgy, our Mass is being offered for Joseph Shabilsky. Uh, before we begin our liturgy, I just want to announce that uh, a priest that serves here for many years, Father Raymond Smart, who has spent a long time being very sick, passed away yesterday, and so just to keep him in our prayers. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, your almighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, 
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with you, God the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for 12 tribes of Israel. Then, having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls the other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people who answered, all that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words of his. The word of the Lord. and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord? For all the good he has done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. 
precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest, of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God. Cleanse your consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called to receive the promise eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they had sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them and said, 
Take this, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. In Germany, there's a beautiful old church with a magnificent bronze door that is made up of four panels. And the artist created in these panels scenes from the scriptures. The first panel depicts six water jars, referring to the miracle, miracle at Cana, when Jesus changed the water into wine. The second panel depicts five loaves and two fish, referring to the miracle at Capernaum, where Jesus multiplied the loaves and the fish. The third panel depicts the 13 people seated at a table, referring to the Last Supper. And the fourth panel depicts three people seated at a table, referring to the first Easter Supper that Jesus ate at Emmaus with his two disciples. Most people would walk by and just say, oh, aren't they nice scenes from the stories of the Bible? But in fact, the artist intentionally chose those stories to make a statement about the Eucharist, that he wanted to make a firm statement about at the entrance of this church, the Eucharist is important and is present. We begin, we look at the first one with the miracle of Cana, where Jesus changed the wine into water. Sometimes modern Christians may have trouble seeing how water can change into wine. But at that time, the early Christians didn't have as much trouble with it because as they would have their vineyards all throughout the summer, the summer rains would come down and the vines would soak the water into the, the, the roots and they would produce the grapes, which ultimately would produce the wine. So changing that water into wine was something that was a little bit more obvious to them than possibly for us. The important thing was that the miracle of Cana is not how Jesus worked it, but why he worked it. Was it merely to have the young people, save the young people from embarrassment out of running out of wine at their wedding? The artist who designed the door suggests that Jesus had a deeper reason, that Jesus wanted to prepare his disciples for the Last Supper when he would change wine into his blood. The second panel with the five loaves and the two fish, the miracle of the loaves and the fishes, would be once again a challenge for modern Christians to understand. But early Christians would not necessarily have a problem with it because they would plant in the spring five bushels of wheat and by the time summer ended, the wheat would multiply into 500 bushels. They could see how that bread could be multiplied miraculously. But again, the important thing is not that Jesus worked this miracle, but why did he work it? Was it merely out of compassion for the crowd who was hungry? Again, the artists suggest another reason. The miracle gave Jesus a chance to tell the people that he would soon feed them more marvelously than he had just done that he would feed them even with, as Moses had fed the, their ancestors in the desert. This leads us to the third panel, where it shows the 13 people seated at the table, referring to the Last Supper. At the Last Supper, Jesus does more than change water into wine. He changes wine into his blood. And he does more than multiply loaves of bread he changes bread into his own body. The gospel writer Mark describes it in today's gospel. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take it, he said, 
This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks to God, and handed it to them. And they all drank from it. And Jesus said, this is my blood, which is poured out for many, my blood, which seals God's covenant. All of this leads to the final panel. It shows three people seated at the table, referring to the first Easter supper Jesus had eaten with his disciples on the way to Emmaus. The artist interprets Emmaus Supper as the first celebration of the Lord's Supper. Luke describes it in this way. Jesus took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke, it, broke the bread and gave it to them. This description matches what Jesus did at the Last Supper. The scene at the Last Supper, the scene in Emmaus, replicate each other. The artist's door is a summary of the Lord's Supper as it's developed in the course of the Gospel. Through these individual stories, which isolated within themselves, we may not necessarily see them in the context of the Eucharist. It traces that image of the Eucharist from Cana, where it was prefigured, to Capernaum, where it was promised, to Jerusalem, where it was instituted, and to Emmaus, where it was first celebrated. Today, we gather as a faith community celebrating this feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. It is a story that we have heard over and over again. We see it real clearly in the story of the Last Supper. We often hear those readings around Holy Thursday. And so that's a continuous image. But when we stop and look at the Gospels that we hear all throughout the year, we realize that there are hidden images that remind us and point our focus towards the Eucharist. This beautiful church in Germany has this door with these stories on the door telling people this is the story of the community that gathers here. We gather here in our beautiful church. We gather here as a community that comes together around the table to receive the body and blood of Jesus in the Eucharist. We are a family and a community that represents and that witnesses to the body and blood of Christ for all that it has been offered to us through Jesus' uh, uh, crucifixion and throughout centuries and up until today, what it means for each one of us. That as we receive the body and blood of Christ, we're strengthened in our journey, we're drawn closer to the Lord in all that we do, and when our story is told, the story of our lives, there need to be those isolated stories which also reflect to the fact that we are Eucharistic people and that all that we do and all that we're strengthened by and how we live reflects that Jesus is living in us through the Eucharist. Please stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God lovingly provides the bread of life and cup of salvation for all who seek him. We now turn to him in prayer with our prayers for the church and for the world.
that God may continue to protect our holy church and bless her efforts in spreading the good news, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our society may be guided by the Holy Spirit in seeking the common good in their communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That conflict within families may be healed and resolved through the gracious mercy of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nourished by the Eucharist, this faith community may continue to grow ever closer to the heart and mind of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died in the light of faith may enjoy the fullness of God's love at the heavenly table, especially Len Roberge, Lillian Neary, and Bill Despiritu, and Father Raymond Smart, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you invite us to fullness of life through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus. We offer these prayers in his name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn for the presentation of the gifts is number 320 in the Breaking Bread Book, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 320. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they know and need his voice. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy lord to share this heavenly food you satisfy the hungry heart with gift the finest wheat Come give to us, O oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. It's not the cup we bless and share, the blood of Christ outpoured. Do not one cup, one loaf declare. Our oneness in the Lord. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O oh, oh, saving Lord, the bread of life to Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice O Lord, grant your church the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. 
nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of your wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, as we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on this journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst. When we are gathered by his love and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. He gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which you show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Teresa of Calcutta and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom and the power are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 367 in the Breaking Bread book, Bread of Angels, number 367. Sour, hard, and hard. 
just love so gentle never let us part Accept our praises, let your glory shine. Bear to us, save us, do nos quotendimus, luchem ad luchem quam in. Let us pray. O Lord, grant that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. We're once again reminded that our annual golf outing is taking place, the Pastor's Cup golf outing. Uh, next Sunday, June 13th, there are details in the bulletin concerning that. I wanted to make a comment about the uh, church regulation of attending Mass on the weekends. Obviously, we're all familiar with that from the time that we were children. And when the, our society was closed up because of the pandemic, all the, our, the bishops lifted or, or gave a dispensation. They gave a dispensation to all the communities that they did not have to attend Mass on weekends because of the pandemic and because of quarantining and so forth. Um, the entire state of New Jersey has lifted that dispensation this weekend, which again then puts that requirement back on all those who live in New Jersey and in the state of Delaware and in Virginia and in uh, Washington DC and West Virginia, that dispensation will be lifted at the end of this month in the last weekend. Archbishop Perez has said that he will not lift the dispensation overnight. He will definitely give everybody enough time to know when that date will be. But just to let everybody know, it's already happening all around us. And it is done usually by states or by, by groups. And so for ourselves, it will be the entire state of Pennsylvania. Once it is decided that the dispensation is lifted, it will take place uh, throughout the entire state of Pennsylvania just to bring you up to speed on what's happening around us. Uh, it's affected uh, all of us and so forth in our society. The Lord be with you. And may mighty God bless us, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day. Our recessional hymn is found in both books. It's number 202 in the Spirit and Song, or 726 in your breaking bread.
that us then by lives so that all might see that our hearts are rest but still they rest in me let us build your kingdom in truth and grace so that all might know they have a rightful place Beauty ever ancient and new Breaking through our deafness so we hear you Shattering the darkness of night A new dawn is rising to bring your light To all the world Let us live our lives so that all might see that our hearts are restless till they rest in thee Let us build your kingdom in truth and grace So that all might know they have a rightful place To gather in your presence we came And to be one in spirit and truth and name Strengthened by the body of Christ Taking up the call now to share your light With all the world Let us live our lives So that all might see That our hearts are restless Till they rest in me Let us build your kingdom In truth and grace So that all might know They have a rightful place Peace be with you everybody Have a good weekend Thank you